Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Computer Security. I am your instructor, Dr. Aftab Khan, here at the Department of Computer Systems Engineering, UT Peshawar. I hope you are And during this COVID period, we are staying safe. So, as a continuation towards our online education, we will be having some recorded video lectures to help you understand the topic easily. So, Bismillah karte hain. So, as a course curriculum, we will see that we will see that security is not defined. What is the problem? So, in respect to security, what are the policies that we will understand? Basic information theory, we will see that we will touch cryptography and the other applications. यहीं पर भी यहां पर हम इंफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफर कर रहे हैं एक अनसिक्योर चैनल पे उसके लिए कुछ क्रिप्टोग्राफिक प्रोटोकॉल्स हैं हम उनको भी पढ़ेंगे और इंशाल्लाह आखिर में हम मेलिशियस कोड को कवर करेंगे तो सिक्योरिटी से क्या मुराद है अगर हम सिक्योरिटी के इस लफ्ज को देखें مختلف जगहों पे जैसे कि पर्सनल सिक्योरिटी कॉर्पोरेट सिक्योरिटी वगैरह पर्सनल तो इसमें से सिक्योरिटी का क्या मतलब बनता है अगर हम इन सब को देखें तो इनमें से जो चीज कॉमन है वो ये कि हम किसी चीज को सिक्योर कर रहे हैं दो बातें यहां पर हम करेंगे सब एक ये कि सिक्योरिटी है क्या नंबर दो किस चीज की सिक्योरिटी और क्यों यानी कि कोई हमारे लिए एक कीमती चीज कोई असासा जिसको हम बहुत अहमियत दे रहे हैं और हम उसको सिक्योर करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो अगर आप इन तमाम जो पर्सपेक्टिव्स हैं इनमें देखें First one, personal security. आप अपनी जान की हिफाजत करते हैं। In the second one, you have the corporate security. यहाँ पर आप अपनी corporation या organisation की जो है security को मध्य नजर रखते हैं। चाहे इसमें उसकी human resources हैं, उसके infrastructure हैं, चाहे उसमें उसकी कोई policies या secrets हैं, आप उसको secure रखने की कोशिश करें, जो कि उस organisation के लिए बहुत अहमियत की हामिल है। in the third case, personal security, जहाँ पर आप अपनी company या अपने group में involved जो human beings हैं, आप उनकी life की security को importance देते हैं। In the fourth case, the homeland security, कि जहाँ पर आप अपनी country की security को जो है मध्य नजर रखे हुए हैं। In the fifth one, communication security, our aim is to protect our communications from hackers and eavesdroppers. Through utilization of cryptographic protocols in network security, our aim is to protect our data, bring our information safe and secure from intrusion, uh, unauthorized access, unauthorized copying, or even deletion of our data through the network. In the last case, in the system security, our goal is to make sure that the hardware and the data present on our system is safe from any form of malicious activity, corruption or deletion. So, when we look at these different perspectives, what does security mean? Security means that you are protecting an asset against a threat. So, what are assets? As we defined in the last slide, assets are those items which are of importance or value to you. Now, what are the threats? Threats can be any form of unwanted or unwarranted scenarios where your information can be lost. It can be lost to unauthorized access, unauthorized copying, deletion, accidental or even unauthorized deletion. So, what does protection mean? In protection, your aim is to Safeguard your data, your human resource, your client, everything from any form of damage. In the perspective of computer security, we are trying to contain our data from any form of unauthorized access, from unauthorized deletion, copying, unwarranted access towards our system. Now there is a question. Does the nature of protection change depending upon the threat? What do you think? Well, yes it does. If you look at or consider an example 
of an online retailer system with threat level changes with a different type of information. Now let us consider the security on a personal level. Suppose you are visiting an online retailer, let's say Taraz or OLX and you are entering any personal information. What type of protection would you want from that system or that online shopping system? And what are the different threats? So the first one is authentication. Have we made sure that the website that we are looking at is the actual website that we want to visit or is someone trying to mimic that website through phishing. Phishing is, def is defined as a copy or a mimicry of a website towards the end user. In the second case, we want to find out what authorization is. In authorization, we want to provide to our user some form of login so that only he or she can access their account once they are authorized to the system where their credentials are checked. The credentials usually that we use are a login ID and a password. Now another form of protection that we want is the privacy of our data. We don't wish our data to be shared with third parties or other users without our consent. The integrity of our data is also very important. The server where the data is present must be a strong one in form of security so that our data is not shared with unauthorized personnel. Then we also want the online retailer to be present to us during our term of let's say shopping. If you have made a website during your course of studies, one of the major goals of your business is that your website is available to the customer all the time. It shouldn't crash during any form of shopping, let's say, or when our customer is visiting it. non repudiation by it we mean that if a data is sent, no one can deny or say that he or she didn't send the data. So some form of information is embedded in the message which can identify the source of your information. Usually this term is used in the legal context where if a person denies that he or she has sent a data, then his data can be checked where the header information can help us find out, identify the source that yes, it originated from his email or system or through his network. Now what other forms of protection do we wish from our online systems? Well, should be safe from any form of attack. It must be safe from any form of hardware failure or as simple as services failure such as electricity. Also, the system must be kept safe in a secure building so that unauthorized personnel cannot access it. Now let us consider the different scenarios where the meaning of security changes. Considering the following scenarios, in the first one, large corporations' computer systems are hacked and data of thousands of customers is stolen. In the second case, a student wishes to hack the university's CMS system and wants to change his or her grade in the several courses that he has taken. In the third case, consider an online shopping website say Olex or Daraz, where it is being overwhelmed by a lot of traffic, making it unavailable even for the right customers or the legitimate customers. So can you now suggest why is it difficult to define security in the context of the digital system? Well, if you look at these scenarios, the level of security changes or the level of threat is different for each of these scenarios. In the first case, the corporation's computer system was penetrated and that of a lot of customers was stolen. Now this is really gruesome because if your data now this is really gruesome that if your customer data is stolen and it is shared with third parties, they can be damaged financially or otherwise. In the second case the level of threat is not that severe. However, hacking itself is a big issue 
and if a student is able to hack such an important system where he or she can change his grades then it is of utmost importance to us to make sure that the system is safe and secure in the third case the level of threat is very low or the probability is low however the damage caused by such a threat is very high if your shopping website is not available to legitimate customers you are losing a lot of money you are losing customers consider it like this if you visit a website and you do not feel happy about it or it's not working then there are very low chances that you might visit it again a question comes in our mind why are the attacks becoming more and more frequent well firstly because they have increased internet connectivity due to which a lot of valuable assets are available online however we have a very low threshold to our the access usually a password is presented just for authorization there is no form of backup checking that is available to the customer there is a low threshold to access because usually it's a single point authorization for example a password then during the course of past two decades a lot of sophisticated attack tools and strategies have been developed by the hackers and eavesdroppers it is as simple to create a virus utilizing a software program where you can select different type of payloads and you can just embed it into a virus program code and send it to the different people it's really becoming easy for the hackers and eavesdroppers to do their job in the first assignment your goal is also to use a couple of programs to collect internet data and then your goal is to recover the raw data from the encrypted online information can you think of other reasons why attacks are becoming more and more frequent well because security is usually a nuisance to us when we are developing something we don't care about security we wish to develop we wish to capture the market much more quickly and sometimes due to that we neglect the security of our system as time passes we also get bored with the multiple security checks and we drop our car down well let us not just worry about how difficult it is there are a couple of facts that i would like to share with you over the past two quarters around 1 million new unique malware samples were discovered now unlike the past worms and mass mailer many of these were extremely targeted to particular industries companies and known users so a bit of comforting fact a lot of people are targeting the industries and companies while there still is a risk to users it is relatively low nowadays once pcs are infected they tend to stay infected and the usual length of the infection is 300 days so if you have had a worst case of virus infection in your computer system and you have got rid of your windows you have formatted your let's say c drive there is a possibility the virus might be hidden in one of your data files on the other drive if it is a time based virus it may click any other day and start replicating itself through the rest of the system a recent study for around 32000 of the websites we were able to find out that almost 97% of the sites care carry a severe vulnerability or some form of loophole is present through which the hackers or eavesdroppers can gather information or penetrate the system nsa carried out a testing of the united states air force security software and they found out that mostly because of inappropriate or incorrect software security configurations almost 80% of those websites are vulnerable to some form of attack now question is come in one why should we even care about the computer security well if i doesn't determine computers programmer sit down they can actually threaten the existence of a country by exploiting the vulnerabilities in their software system they can destroy the logistics operational plans the intelligence capabilities and even deliver the weapons to the wrong hands or hinder their ability of the weapons now 
in the Computer World March 24 report, a top FBI official warned that if cyber adversaries of the US combine together, they can virtually access any computer, posing a risk that it could even challenge their country's own existence. So you can see why that even if a group of or a handful of hackers sit down, they can challenge even a country's very existence. So we need to educate ourselves about computer security so that we can enhance our own protection, how to protect data on your cell phone, mobiles, tablets, to make sure our websites are safe and secure, then we can help our colleagues and, and try to instill security policies to make sure that our workplace is now secure by educating ourselves about computer security. We can make sure that if you are carrying out any form of online transaction, we can enhance the quality and the safety of those transactions and make sure that no one is trying to copy or log our entries or our passwords during our transaction period. If you are knowledgeable about the computer and data security, you can help improve the overall security in cyberspace. So, can you tell me now why cybersecurity is becoming particularly difficult? Well, because most technologically related efforts are concerned about that something good should happen. The technology or created in the sense that it should benefit people. However, security is all about making sure that the bad things or the worst scenario that can happen must not happen or should never happen. So, community security is difficult because and it is really different from the fact that you are not just trying to find bugs in your system, but you have to identify other loopholes and weaknesses or vulnerabilities in your system that are susceptible to misuse and abuse through by different programmers, hackers or eavesdroppers, even if your system was made safe secure to perform in a certain way. These malicious people can sit down and abuse your system or damage your data. So, when we say about bad things should never happen, what are these bad things? These bad things are all those possible attack scenarios where your system's vulnerabilities or loopholes may be exploited and your system may be brought down. Now, Bruce Schreiner said, a good attack is one that the engineers have never thought of. So a hacker or eavesdropper is considering your system from all the perspective and is thinking if you have placed all the security checks, he is trying to think if there is any form of vulnerability or loophole or weakness present in your system which he, he or she can exploit and try to gain access to your data. So the one of the other reasons why computer security is really difficult is like fighting the Saturn. Now, what are the characteristics of Saturn? Well, firstly, he's present everywhere. Secondly, he's trying to overcome your character or your behavior by trying to find out what weaknesses you have in your behavior. For example, if a person who is good with timely prayers, the Saturn will not attack him in the domain of his prayers. He knows he's strong. He knows he is going to pray on time. So he will try to find another way or find weaknesses in his range of activities where he can commit a sin easily. Let's say a person who is good with timely prayers but lies a lot or can easily lie. Then the Saturn will not distract him from the prayers more. Rather, once the prayers are completed, the Saturn will attack him in a way that he would wish for the person to lie and to exploit his weakness. Now remember, as a computer analyst or a security analyst, your goal is to find and eliminate all vulnerabilities or weaknesses in your system. But the hacker or the eavesdropper, he only needs one loophole to exploit your system and to get a chance to reach your data. So, one of the reasons why cybersecurity is becoming more difficult is regarded as the principle of ease of penetration. Now let us consider an example first. Say you built a house where you have guardrails and barbed wires placed 
on your ground and upper floors. But the basement windows or the doors are not locked properly or there is a very low level of security present on the basement area. Nothing. Will the thief or robber try to enter the house through the ground or the upper floor? No. It is much more easy to come towards the basement area. So the principle of easy penetration is that the hacker or eavesdropper will not attack your system where it is really strong. Rather, they will try to find the loophole of vulnerabilities through which they can easily access your system and get an access to your data. One of the reasons why it is difficult to have a high level of computer security is because sometimes security is an, an afterthought for us. We want to build a system where we want to capture the market much more quickly, let's say, or we want to do something useful. So we are not concerned about security that much. And maybe let's say you are working, you are playing or you are writing a word document and your, let's say, antivirus software keeps on popping again and again telling you that someone wanted to hack your system and gets on notification or let's say if you have used the panda antivirus you would have found out that if you have click even any folder sending the, the antivirus will ask permission for each and every action after some time this becomes nuisance either you subvert the antivirus system you bypass it or you just disable it while you want to achieve some throughput by doing so you lower your guard and you are giving a chance to the hackers and eavesdroppers to access your system. On the other hand, perfect security is not possible at all. The three golden rules to make sure that your computer is re or really safe is by number one, by not over owning a computer. Even if you are owning a computer, you shouldn't power it on. Or if you have powered it on, don't just use it. By this, you can keep yourself safe. However, unfortunately, uh, the only way to really protect your computer is by disconnecting it from the internet, digging a hole, throwing your computer in it, putting some cement and burying it a hundred feet below the ground. By doing so, you make sure there is no form of access towards your data on the computer. Now this may seem silly, but that is the only probable way nowadays to make sure no one accesses your data. While your goal with computer security is to make sure that the bad things or the weaknesses vulnerabilities are not exploited, threats don't happen and after short of that is usually that you are preventing good things from even happening. We discuss a scenario, let's say you are gaming, you are playing an online game or you are playing a system game and your antivirus keeps on popping and gives you messages I block this website, I block this software, I block this file it is disturbing your peace of mind you are not getting your throughput so what will you do? you will just disable antivirus or close it for the time being when you are playing a game let's say but by disabling your antivirus or your firewall you are giving a chance to the hackers or the eavesdroppers Normally, you have to give some form of trade-off between security and other important project goals. Maybe you need to lower your security in order to achieve much more functionality or make your system much more usable. Sometimes to even get more throughput, you may reduce your security checks. Or if you want to capture the market, you may overlook the security features in your software and would want to develop it much more quickly. One of the other reasons is that you just wish your system to be simple enough so that any layman user can use it and they don't have to worry about a lot of security checks and features. A couple of lessons that we learned from the first lecture are that there is an old military adage saying one who defends everything actually is defending nothing. So you cannot protect yourself from all directions rather you are going to see in the next couple of lectures, you prioritize your threats and you handle those which are much more probable. It is difficult to obtain security at an ideal position due to the several reasons that we discussed. And since we cannot achieve the perfect security, there is always some form of trade-off between security 
and other system goals that we wish to achieve. Security is usually then regarded as a risk management procedure where risks or the threats are handled. So according to Vega and McGraw, they assert that the software and system security is actually about managing risk. And by risk they mean the threats, vulnerabilities, weaknesses in your system. Now risk is the possibility that any particular threat will happen and will have an adverse impact on your system either by exploiting a particular vulnerability or finding a weakness in your system. So whenever you are assessing any risk, you are going to consider two things, the probability of the risk and the level of threat there is or the amount of the damage that it can cause. So risk management from the Yagen and McGraw's perspective consists of six steps. You assess what assets you have. You are going to make a list of what are the valuable items in your system. Now it can be the hardware, the software, the people, the network in your system. Then you are going to assess what are the different threats that can occur to the hardware, the software, the system or the people. Then you are going to check out if they already have any form of weaknesses or if there is a loophole. Now, there are chances that you might overlook something or miss something, however, it's better to make a risk assessment report in where you want to find out what weaknesses are present in your system. Once all the risks have been assessed, you are going to prioritize your countermeasure options because you cannot handle computer security from all perspectives. And on the basis of the different level of threats and the damage it can cause, you have to make some risk management decisions, what steps should be taken in order to prioritize the damage coming from certain types of risks which need to be handled first when as compared to the other risks. So the different stages of handling risk involve the first one is risk acceptance. Consider it like this, you own a car, you have bought car insurance for it. So you are at peace by knowing that even if your car, car gets into an accident, insurance will cover. That is risk acceptance. Due to your acceptance that even if a threat occurs, it's damage, you can accept it or you can cover it. A good thing is that you should actually avoid the risk in the first place by not performing any activity that would incur risk into your system. For example, Whenever you write up, let's say, a Windows-based system, the first thing that you should do after installing Windows is to disable the remote login. Now, by default it is, but the security checks placed there, you should go and check it and make sure that it has a two or three level checkup before remote login is given to any user. In risk mitigation, you are trying to take some steps that if a risk happens, the damage can be limited to a certain area or a certain amount. An example of that is the fireproof drawers that are used in the foreign country or in large buildings. The report that we were working in had a fireproof door and the aim was that if God forbid a fire erupted in our lab, it shouldn't spread to the corridor or the adjacent lab. This is a mitigation that you are trying to limit the risk to a certain area. Similarly, if someone gets an unauthorized access, it shouldn't be towards the whole system. Even if they are getting some data, it should be limited to only a certain amount of files in the worst case scenario. In order to deal with risk, one way is to transfer the risk to someone else. For example, most insurance contracts and home security systems are the techniques where we shift our risk from our head towards the other people. Let's say you wish to go on a vacation. When would you be more peaceful? That lock your house but leave it unattended or you lock your house and let someone watch over your house during your period of vacation. Of course, in the latter case you are much more happier. So one of the tools that is used to assess the risk is the analyzed loss expectancy. ALE is a table of 
the possible losses, their probabilities, and the potential cost of damage occurring over a period of one year. Let us consider an example of a banquet yearly. There are four different types of losses happening in the bank. The swift fraud, the ATM fraud, the ATM fraud small and the teller theft. If you look at the amount, almost 15, 50 million dollars are being lost in the swift fraud. Around 250 thousand dollars are lost in ATM fraud in the large case while around $20,000 are lost in the ATM fraud in the small case. While teller theft is amounting to $3,240 over a year. So considering that we need to reduce this damage, where will you invest first? Of course you are going to invest in the swift fraud area because almost $50 million are being lost. However. An important factor that we are missing here right now is the probability of occurrence of these threats over an year. Let's say that information is provided to you as well. If the probability of this incidence is given to you, then you can multiply it with the total amount and find out that over a period of an average year, what is the total loss that we can expect. So for the safe fraud, it comes down to $250,000. For ATM fraud large, it is $50,000. For ATM fraud small, it is $10,000, while $648,000 are being lost to teller theft. So right away, our priority changes from swift fraud to teller theft. Because even if small amounts of money is being lost at teller theft, the number of occurrences is so high that the total amount lost is results in larger volumes. So whenever we consider a computer threat or a computer security perspective towards any risk, two things that we need to consider. The amount of damage that risk carries and the probability of occurrence of that damage or the frequency of its occurrence. So a question comes into mind. Does ALE suffice as the right tool which can help us prioritize our risks and help us in risk mitigation. Well, let me give you an example. Say we flip a coin. If it is heads, you give me $2. But if it is tails, I give you $1. Will you play the game? Well, it doesn't look like a really good deal that if it is heads, you have to give me $2. While it is tails, I give you $1. But there is an important factor missing. What is the probability of heads or tails? I didn't tell you that it was a fair coin with a 0.5 probability for each occurrence. Let's say it is an imbalance or unfair coin. Let's say probability is towards the tail. Now will you play the game? Yes. Early with just the probabilities and or the number of occurrence of threat and just the amount of that threat is not enough. Another important thing that you need to consider is this expected value or the overall mean value. Now that we are going to study during the entropy period and we are going to find out if a system is actually worth it or not. So from today's lecture, we found out that perfect security is not impossible. However, realistic security is actually about managing the different type of risk or threats that can occur towards in your computer system. There are very systematic techniques that can be applied for assessing your risk and then handling them. Now assessing your risk is very important but it is really difficult and depends on a lot of factors such as technical, economic, psychological which needs to be handled effectively. So I thank you all. This ends our lecture one and hope to see you in lecture number two. Thank you.